Sometimes I rhyme slow, sometimes I rhyme quick, quick, quick. This next song that I'm going to play represents when... What does this song represent? <laughs> this song represents... Oh, when I started spinning electronic music. So it is Feeling So Real by Moby. Yeah, classic Moby. You know, I talk about my a lot of my friends on here. And it was my my buddy Adam that took me to my first rave, and it was a movie show up at Northern Lights, probably 1999, and we were wrecked. Um, yeah, we were what was what they call it candy flipping and acid and ecstasy. I mean, I had never experienced anything that, especially like coming from like the the hardcore scene where you know people are generally wearing maybe dark clothes and drinking and lots of fights to go here and everyone is just having such an amazing time and it, I, the, the rave scene in Albany at that time was spectacular and I just I immersed myself in it, moved down to Albany, got the apartment above the record store where I met DJ Dames and he comes along in the story in a little bit and just fully fully immersed myself into that into that world you know, and then, uh, and then uh, probably about two months after we moved to the records st- above the record store, we were having such a great time living that life down there. The fucking record store burns down. Um, I'm not gonna get into the, the 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 theories around how it happened, but the record store burns down. And uh, yeah, so me and my buddy Bill, we move into another apartment. I'm down on Lark Street, and then uh, I threw this rave called Fate, and. It was, I, it was a fundraiser also for, to help kind of, you know, give money to the record store, even though we didn't make enough money to help the record store, but that's okay. But what was crazy about that was, so, you know, I want to throw this rave. I've been, through the, been throwing these parties, and I wanted to throw a bigger party. And through a family, my Aunt Sharon, I'll call you out on this. My Aunt Sharon hooked us up with this dude that worked at, like, a car rental spot in Albany. And... Freaking, he says that he's he's got money. He wants to finance this rave. So I'm throwing this rave called Fate, and I got DJ Micro, DJ Extreme, all of the local DJs that are part of the crew. And come to find out, like I'm I'm going and picking up this money. And I'm getting it in increments, right? And it's increments of three, four thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, you know, total fifteen G's. And every time I'm picking up the money from this dude, it's like tens, five, twenties. So we figured out pretty quick that my Aunt Sharon had hooked us up with a dude who uh, either was a drug dealer or he knew drug dealers. So we throw the party, right? And it's, it's an awesome party, you know. Uh, had a lot of people show up. Uh, Micro killed it. Uh, it, was just, it was a dream come true opening up for Micro. It really was. Um, and But then, like, you know... We didn't, we didn't kind of make enough money. <laughs> so they're telling us that, uh, yeah, that's a really easy way to say it. We lost money. We definitely lost money. And so they're, now they come back and tell us that, like, yo, you got to give us that money back. But we had, you know, my mom was my business partner at the time. We had signed all these contracts with them. And so we ended up having this meeting at uh, oh, Lark Street, like cafe on Lark Street, um, Hollywood, Cafe Hollywood on Lark Street. We have this meeting because, and it's like these drug dealers from New York City and the owner of the nightclub where I threw the party, he had friends that were in a biker gang, so they were there too. It was like a real life episode of Sons of Anarchy. And my mom and I just, you know, showed this kingpin drug dude, not a kingpin, but you know, the dude from the city. We were like, yo, like we have these contracts. This is where all the money was spent. You know, the deal was that if we make a profit, you get 80% of the profit. So if we take a loss, you take the loss. You know, you can't take, you can't get all the reward without taking risk. So my mom and I, you know, he understands what's going on. We part situations. Then 
We sue the, the company that did the flyers because they fucked up and printed them on paper. We won that lawsuit. We got money back from the t-shirts that were, that were printed wrong. So my mom and I ended up profiting like $2,000. So it was, a very, it was a very successful venture, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, that's that story. That, that was a good one. I have a, I have a note here. And it says, drug dealers, bikers, mom, lawsuit, profit. 